Welcome back to part five of this new home HVAC installation video. As you can see, I've already brazed the copper. I put this, uh, this putty uh, that's supposed to be like a heat sink where it's supposed to absorb the heat as you brace. And the reason that that is important is that your TXV, aka metering device, is connected with a gasket. So if you overheat the pipe, it will melt that gasket and you will have refrigerant leak problems. And so you'll notice that the torch tips that I use when I'm brazing, um, they hit the pipe at two angles, which gets the pipe hot faster and allows me to get in and get out, which reduces the possibility of creating copper oxide, which is what happens when you have heated copper and uh, oxygen. And the reason that you don't want copper oxide inside the system, just imagine a bunch of ashes floating around inside with the refrigerant, just clogging up vital components of the system. All right, so this is one of the things that I, I see a lot of uh, mistakes on. And this is the way that I do it. I'm not sure why so many people don't put it. I've seen these with uh, plastic ties. I've seen them with just line set tape. And then this strap somewhere like on the, you know, on the floor somewhere or in the back somewhere. I don't know why they don't see this strap. This strap actually comes with the coil and instructions on how to install it. So that, and then it's right here, it has the, the size. So the pipe is seven eighths. So right here it says seven eighths. I'm not sure if you can see that. So what you gotta do is wrap this around, make sure your bulb is at the 10 or at the two o'clock. And then this is gonna go through that little slot right there. Push it through and you see right there, I don't know if you can see it. It says seven eighths, right? Right here it says seven eighths. That's where you know that this is gone in far enough. Just make sure that this is at the 10 o'clock or the 2 o'clock. Make sure it's parallel to the floor. The bulb has to be parallel to the floor at the 2 o'clock. I got that directly from the installation instructions. And so there we go. There, once it doesn't move, I'll give it maybe one more little, one more little turn. That's it. So now you know it's making good contact. Okay, so this grommet, sometimes I'll slide it up the pipe and then after I'm done brazing the joint, I'll slip it back down. And then sometimes I do this. Just depends on, I don't know. I don't really plan it, I just do it <laughs> sometimes. You might have to lift this up a little bit. This protects the copper from the vibration cutting into it in the future. And it also helps to seal this hole so you don't have air coming out of it. All right, so now they're both there. They're protecting the bottom of the pipe and helping to reduce the amount of air coming through the hole. So now we're gonna put this insulation back on there. We used to call this Rubotex. All right. And please don't do like other lazy installers do and not finish sealing up this Rubotex all the way. So now I'm getting ready to run the electrical. So I'm going to drill a hole behind this transite pipe against the corner. Uh, this is like a, like a little closet slash pantry. Um, so I'm going to run the EMT behind that transite pipe so you can't see it. And then from the attic, I'm going to do um, Romex wire. And underneath the house, I'm also going to do Romex wire. So there you see the EMT already ran behind the transite pipe. It's in the corner. So I'm just going to put uh, maybe like two straps. I can't remember how many straps I put. I think I put two straps or at least one <laughs> in the middle uh, just to hold it uh, in place. So I have to apologize because some of my footage fell out of order because I saved it in a different place, different file formats, uh, stuff that you don't care about. Bottom line is it fell out of order, but still, this is still um, good footage. So I'm gonna put it in the video anyways even though it's not in order. Um, getting my uh, my Hillmore, my bender, because I'm gonna uh, try to avoid as many fittings as possible by using this bender and then um, a swedging tool that you're gonna see right now.
And just real quick, something I wanted to mention is this wall. I don't know if you just saw that. It was so flaky and crumbly and brittle, and it was just falling apart. That stucco was just any. I couldn't sneeze because like a bunch of that stucco would fall down. All right. So now that um, we bent our copper, we're gonna get ready to brace it to the condenser. So I put the platform base and then set my condenser where I want it the customer wanted it right there I, I I don't think it's an ideal location but we're pretty limited because of their swimming pool the clearance on the top it's good enough as far as the installation instructions go uh, it has plenty of clearance on the top so now as you can see I'm installing the vibration isolator pads or iso pads whatever you want to call them just to help to keep the vibration down to a minimum and they also help to make the unit level. So now I'm dry fitting these uh, pieces that I've made for the line set. I am actually, instead of using an elbow, pre-manufactured elbow, I like to bend my own because it has a longer radius. The longer radius means it won't count uh, as much as, like if you buy a regular copper, 7 8 copper, uh, I think I can't remember exactly uh, so don't quote me on this but I think it's about maybe two feet it adds uh, of length just adding an elbow adds about two feet of length in copper and so now I'm using the swedging tool it's um, a hydraulic type like a gun and it's really good it's uh, I know Hillmore makes one too but this one was like half the price um, and it's been working great so far just a friendly reminder do not brace without nitrogen and this next tip is optional but I really like it um, I like using nylog I put it on the cores and I put it on caps um, I put it on my gauges when I'm doing vacuums um, pretty much everything um, not worried about it contaminating the system or anything like that it's uh, oil based it'll just mix in and blend into the refrigerant it won't harm a thing as far as I can tell and what it does is it, it creates a, a better seal so yeah I mean if you keep everything um, fresh fresh gaskets and you don't over tighten and everything like that good practices will will also do the same thing but uh, I like the extra security that I feel when uh, when I use this product so now I'm pressurizing the refrigerant lines just to test for leaks before I start my, my vacuum pump. Just a quick note, I used to have my micron gauge on my vacuum pump, but I've since learned that it's not the, the best place for your micron gauge. So you want your micron gauge to be as close to the condensing unit as possible from what I've learned. So now I'm running uh, the circuit uh, from the panel into the underneath the house into the crawl space. Uh, it's going to be for both. I'm going to run one three quarter EMT uh, down with both uh, circuits into the crawl space underneath the house, and then from there I'm going to branch off. Um, so first I used the masonry bit to go through the stucco, and then I used one of my regular hangers to go through through the wood. Uh, and then by doing this, I go uh, underneath the house to verify that when I make the hole that there's not going to be something in the way. And so now it's time to run that uh, 8 gauge Romex wire underneath the house for the condensing unit. And so my original plan was to record the whole trip uh, to the condenser and then show you where I stub out the the wire and then uh, show you as I work my way back to the electrical panel but directly in front of me is the uh, the floor heater that remained that she wanted to keep uh, my customer wanted to keep the one of the old floor heaters just like an emergency like a backup in case she ever needed heat and there was no power which is not a bad idea um, but it was just so tight squeezing in in between that um, the foundation wall and the floor heater so I didn't take my camera over there um, and then now now what I'm doing is I'm wor my working my way back with the Romex wire and I'm also uh, putting Romex staples 
on the wire uh, and stapling it to the floor joist to get it up and out of the way. And this is where it got a little bit scary. There's like some weird bugs underneath the house. There was water bugs and then there was these weird bugs that looked like uh, centipedes or something. So I, right now I, I have the, the vacuum pump going. I pretty much, as soon as I turn it on, usually it's early in the day. I turn it on and I'll just let it go um, all day while I do other stuff. So by the time I get to the vacuum pump, I always have like, I don't know, 200, or, you know, microns or, you know, sometimes it looks like even less. So now I have to go back underneath the house to run the circuit for the for the furnace. Uh, I already did the one for the condensing unit and now I gotta do the furnace. I'm not looking forward to it because I saw them water bugs and, and those other weird bugs. But at least I'm not gonna be working so much in that uh, area where all those bugs were at. So this white Romex wire is the one that um, I drilled a hole for the EMT in that uh, pantry uh, behind in the corner. So uh, this wire uh, goes through with the EMT and then underneath the house is just uh, Romex wire all the way to the electrical panel. Well, not all the way because it has to go through another uh, EMT up the wall, maybe like two feet or two and a half feet up the wall. So finally, I'm so happy to be out of that crawl space. Even with the cover, I was, um, all that dust, it, it was such fine dust that it was just going right through the coveralls and um, I made chocolate milk every time I took a shower. So now it's time to mount the disconnect box uh, next to the condensing unit. So we're back in the attic and I was trying to figure out which would be the best way to run the electrical. Um, whenever possible, I like to go directly to the, the plug, to the furnace uh, receptacle or, or the plug. Uh, and then after that, I like to go to the switch and then to the light. But right here, it looked like the, the, the most direct route would be to go to the switch and then branch off uh, one Romex going to the light and then the other one going to the plug. So that's the way that I ended up doing this wiring. All right, it's coming along. Started to put my, my boxes. There's the one for the switch over there. Here are copper all brazed. 